This is the show where we talk a lot, not a lot about sports or the Big 12. This is the Dose Grande squad. And long intro. I think they changed the intro, too, wherever it is. Let's, let's We're see. Talking ball with the Big 12 squad, sponsored by Game Time. From Oklahoma State to Utah, from Kansas State to BYU, from Houston to Texas Tech, it's the local experts of the Locked On Podcast Network bringing you scoops, breakdowns, and the most comprehensive preview of the upcoming Big 12 weekend. Buckle up, it's the Big 12 squad and we have a seat for you. No hurt feelings and thin skin allowed. Squad up, you're part of the Big 12 squad. Yes, they made a brand new intro, but they left Duke's football stadium in it. Uh Go Duke! (laughs) Go Duke! Nothing gets past production. Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to the Locked On Big 12 squad. I'm Drake Toll alongside a bunch of cronies who know Minimal about sports, but at least they are entertaining. Thanks for making our shows your first listen every single day. Grab a beverage or something, something. I have a reader that I'm supposed to give you, but I don't know what it says. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is where you go when you need the best prices on any ticket guaranteed. Cody Stovall with Oklahoma State. JT Wistersill, who forgot his name card so no one would know. Kevin Borba of Locked On Buffs. Derek Johnson of Locked On Jayhawks. They have basketball. Nick Marv, who hosts Locked On Cyclones, brand new to the company. Richie Bradshaw, Locked On Sun Devils. And Chris Lebel, who's got some like real sensual. This is like a. I'm kind of getting this kind of. This is interesting. Chris, is, are you this, laying this, in this bed? Seduction level edition. I I dig it. Yeah, cool. Chris, you got to. Hey, why don't you hey, unmute Chris. yourself, yeah. Mr. Grand, Sexy Grandpa? Pan? Be nice. Be nice. I'm in a I'm in a chair. I'm scrambling. It, you know, a lot going on. But yeah, I'm here, no, gentlemen. Don't have to be nice. To you guys haven't been nice to me all season. Chris had hemorrhoid surgery, uh, so he can't get across the, the house to his computer. He's just got to sit. Untrue. Untrue. <laughs> He's got to sit real tight. Um, speaking of people who are sitting, we're sitting pretty with Arizona State and Iowa State in the Big 12 championship. Let's go to the man who's got the biggest opinion on it. That is preseason number one, JT Wistersell. JT, wah, man, your thoughts first, because go back to the first squad show to today. Much has changed. Oh my gosh, much has changed. I mean, but this is why we love college football, right? Unpredictable. That's what makes this sport so special. And these two teams went out and they earned it on the field. And yes, they're weird tiebreakers and stuff and all that we can get into. But I mean, Kenny Dillingham's done a heck of a job. We obviously know Iowa State's one of the best programs year in and year out in the Big 12. I'm excited for this matchup. And of course, would I have loved for it to be Utah, but Utah didn't deserve to be there despite all the preseason expectations. So I love that the Big 12 is unpredictable, and I'm excited to see what the Big 12 is going to deliver because I think despite what a lot of national media members think, I think whatever Big 12 team gets in can make noise in this playoff. That's the nicest thing he's ever said about us. <laughs> Say it Somebody with your chest, JT. Clip that one. That was awesome. Uh, Kevin Borba, three weeks ago, you were guaranteed a spot in this conference title game, and now you are playing in the cheese it Bowl, Pop-Tart Bowl. Uh, what the is, bowl? <laughs> yeah, what's the vibe around Boulder, Colorado, now that you are home for the next couple of weeks? Well, first of all, you can't count on Parker and his Houston Cougars ever, apparently. We just needed them to, to win one game. They couldn't do it, just like he can't show up Tuesday nights, and here we are. Oh. Realistically, the vibe is still good, though, Actually. Right? All right, I'll admit it. I had to bring another food take to the table. Part- what does he mean, another food take? When was his first food take? I love it. I love it. Right on cue. Um, we'll get back to that later, Borba. Continue. Yeah, no, I hate to follow that up, but Colorado just last year was 4-8. and eight. The year before, they were 1-11. and 11. Um, It's been a hot minute since they've experienced any sort of success, and they promised Peggy they'd take her to a bowl game, and even though it's not a playoff game, um, Miss Peggy, who's 100 years old, will be getting to go to a bowl game. So I still think it's a really uh, great step in the right direction for the program, and I think they're going to build off of it and sort of um, take this momentum into the offseason. Touching moment. Uh, JT, your microphone's causing a white noise sound. I'm going to mute you. Raise your hand if you'd like to speak. We should have done that from show number one, and that would have made this show go a lot smoother. But not uh, as much fun. Right. Let's go to you, Richie Bradshaw. You're in the Big 12 Championship this week. Yeah, so this is obviously really exciting for the team that was picked to finish last and there shouldn't be any ASU fans who saw this much coming. I said seven and five in the off season. I said, I thought I was being optimistic. No one saw this coming. This has been an awesome run. I don't think it stops. I will tell you, no Jordan Tyson this weekend is very concerning, True. but as long as you have Cam Scadaboo, the people's running back, 
you have a chance in most games. So we'll wait and see. The way the ASU is playing right now, there there's not very many teams that should look at ASU and go, yeah, that's an easy win. To to back up the Big 12, though, with Iowa State at 16, I love that the playoff committee is doing just enough so that they can get us in the top 12, but there should be no teams in the playoff that should overlook ASU or Iowa State, who's another football program. We're in for a really good championship game this weekend. I'm I'm excited for it. This is this is going to be fun. I don't know how much we're going to throw it, but we're going to run it a lot. Nick, tell him you're going to stomp on his throat. That was way too kind. You're in the Big 12 that was, championship. That was so nice. For what? <laughs> I'm over here. I'm about ready to throw a chair over. Like what? What this Dude, is? We'll save that for our crossover oh, episode this week. The old Kyle Ooh, Whittingham, coming. huh? There you go, Nick. <laughs> oh, from the top rope. No, Iowa State. I mean, yeah, it's kind of the same boat. Realistically, uh, nobody expected much from them. And start starting the season seven and zero. Oh, all of a sudden, it was just national title or bust, which kind of came out of nowhere. I don't know why we did that. And then we dropped two. So got our fastball back. Here we are. Uh, conference championship game. Couldn't be more excited either. Um, I just I think I bring a little bit more animosity to the table. I'm not exactly I got time. friendly with Arizona State right now. I got time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's good. Uh, Chris Level, <sighs> two coordinators must be replaced. Hey, hey, my my guys beat both of those teams, man. Yeah, where are you? <laughs> I'm sitting in my chair. Yes, he is. <laughs> with very good ambient humble, lighting. Man. Yeah, that's right. Hey, all, all kidding aside, um, that uh, this is not a title game that anybody predicted. This is the beauty of this league. I know mm. this league gets crapped on nationally. It's it's it, it frustrates me greatly. Um, Somebody can get into this thing and make some noise. I do, after seeing both of these teams up close and personal, I do worry a lot about the Jordan Tyson, uh, him being, you know, not not available. And Sam Levis going to have to, you know, you, you mentioned, Richie, about, you know, running the ball a lot. At some point, Sam Levis going to have to help them win that game. There's just no doubt about it. And I think he can, but, there you boy, go. Iowa State's going to be, be tough to beat. Uh, and I think that it'll be kind of a road game for the Sun Devils there in Arlington. Boy, hide the – what is it, bush light, uh, Nick? Is that what they is that what they suck up there in Ames? We are, we're going to drink Arlington dry bush light, that's for sure. Okay, yeah, there you go. So there won't and be we'll drink whatever you put in front anywhere. of us. <laughs> oh, no. This is going to be – like, some years it's Baylor in the Big 12 championship, but there's no alcohol sales. And then there's this, um, <laughs> which is going to be something. Derek Johnson, you're the reason we're all here. Oh, I was just here to listen. I was just here to listen. I, I didn't think we needed you, anything. You, we, we can talk basketball later, <laughs> but you are the reason that Colorado and BYU are at home and mm. you couldn't even make a bowl game. Mm. How does it feel to have wreaked complete havoc <laughs> on the most chaotic league in college football? Love I you, mean, Derek. it feels better than like, you know, five years ago where every year it was two and 10, three and nine. Valid. So at least there's something, at least there's an identity now. Um, obviously if this is just going to come down to which school beat Kansas, then Arizona state, uh, congrats on the big 12 championship. So uh, that honestly might be my biggest worry for Iowa state in this one. It has to be, you look at the Kansas game, you know, they were able to move the ball. They were able to run the ball. Weirdly enough. Why is Iowa state who has had this great defense for so long? How would they give it up five yards per carry? How are they 15th of 16 teams in yards allowed per carry in the big 12? How on earth are they going to stop Cam Scadaboo? Uh, yeah, it's it's I guess been fun playing spoiler, not fun missing a bowl game. Yeah, sorry, Derek. Um, coming Wait, up, you're telling me three and nine can't be an identity? Rude. <laughs> <laughs> They're so cool, Cody. Who'd you fire this week? Why do you have to do that? Yep, right there it is. What's the definition of insanity, Cody? What's the definition? You don't you have like an ad or something to do? <laughs> coming up, the locked on. Or that's, that's, we should never have a locked on college football playoff committee ever. <laughs> And if we did, they would sell their soul to the SEC and it would be the worst show in human existence. But everyone would watch it for some stupid reason. Coming up, let's talk the college football playoff. This is the Locked On Big 12 squad. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is exactly where you go when you think, you know what? I'm going to tackle the NFL with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, customers can bet $5, get 150 in bonus bets. If you win, the FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. Get a hunch in the middle of a game. Check out the latest stats, you live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. 
Visit FanDuel.com to join today. Look at the live play-by-play. View the latest stats. Take Iowa State plus two this weekend if you want to. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. The college football playoff committee is blank. Gentlemen, take it away. Uh, how do you say poop in Spanish? <laughs> Defecado. Defecado. Oh, there you how go. do you say there the S word in Spanish? Uh, I couldn't Defecado. have said it better, Drake. I couldn't have said it better. It needs to be replaced, though. Can we just be honest? Like, bring back the computer. Just keep the same format where the um, conference champions are still valued and all this stuff. But having a subjective group of people every year tell us certain things matter one week, but then one week, the next week, it really doesn't. And no consistency. Sim- similarly, there's right. always these same brands or schools where it's like, well, but it's this insert blank. And so just get rid of all that, right? It's too subjective. Um, I think realistically, we're taking away from what the great value is of the sport. And I think we're kind of diminishing the playoff and making it insufferable when it really shouldn't be. It should be a celebration of the sport, of the expansion of more teams getting in. And it's now just turned into an sec big 10, you know, what fest. Let, let, yeah. me, let me ask you guys, let me ask you guys this, that that was floated last summer. And I think they floated to see what everybody's reaction was going to be. And I think a lot of people liked it. Some didn't like it. But as you sit here right now, if I tell you the Big Ten and the SEC get four bids each, but the Big 12 gets two automatic every year, are you taking it or no? No, no, because you're still bending to the will of the SEC and the Big Ten. We, we already have this complaint that that's the whole bias that the playoff committee has is we do whatever we can to get the SEC in there. That's why a three-loss Bama team – is number 11 now guaranteeing that they get into the playoff no matter what happens because we have to have Bama in there. There's Old Miss that's right there. There's uh, South Carolina that's right there. They're counting on these other teams to lose so that they can make sure that they get included. So allowing automatic bids for conferences, I think that that's just the worst way you can go about it unless you want to make it 16. Like if you want to make it bigger, Sure, you can have the automatic bid, but it's already such a flawed system. If for no other reason than this, this committee has their own agenda to it. It's not about the best teams, and it's not about the consistency of stuff. Take mm-hmm. ASU and Iowa State an example. They're both ten and two football teams. Why are they behind the nine and three SEC teams? Well, they play better competition. Okay, that's fine. Why is eleven and one Boise State ahead of them? Well, they have a better record. Well, that doesn't make any sense. You need to have some kind of consistency with whatever you're saying. SMU's only loss this year was, was it BYU or K-State? BYU. 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 So there you go. A Big 12 team beat a team that we're championing around. And SMU is a very good football team. It's it's not SMU slander. It's just the inconsistencies continue, continue to pile up. And a league like the Big 12 that continues to be discounted. I left the Pac-12 hoping that it was going to be better. And it almost feels like it's gotten worse. Like it's just frustrating to consistently be be in a situation where you're just going to be overlooked and disapproved of and disrespected. So having the automatic bids, having four bids for the SEC, four bigs bids, excuse me, for the Big Ten, I don't think that solves anything. I think it just pushes their narratives even more to have the teams that they want to be in the playoff every single year. Yeah. Guys, I, mean, I get the frustration. Really quick, Drake. Guys, I get the frustration, but I think what's hard is all these teams are flawed in one way or another. Even in Arizona State, which I like, right? You have two wins yeah. versus ball eligible teams. You have eight wins versus teams that aren't going to a bowl game. Alabama, I, I hate the Oklahoma loss, but at the same time, Alabama still has wins, and I don't be like being the guy to argue for the SEC. But South Carolina, the Georgia win, like Alabama has these good wins. So I can understand why you have a three-loss team versus a two-loss Big 12 team, a two-loss Big 12 team that – and the nice thing Arizona State is what can they do? Get a win versus Iowa State to improve their resume. And I think they do need and that. barely make the playoff. You're, you're losses, rewarding a team that's not even going to play this weekend. Say what again? They're, you're rewarding a team that's not even going to play this weekend. Ooh. You're guaranteeing Alabama. No. They're 9-3. and three, They're not playing for a, a SEC championship. You've guaranteed they're going to the playoff, whereas ASU and 
Iowa State, who are both 10-win football programs, well, no matter what, one of you has to miss it. And that's mm-hmm. insane to me because you're going to guarantee that the SEC's runner-up is making it and the Big Ten's runner-up is making it. And there's a really good chance the ACC's runner-up is going to make it. At a minimum, somehow, Miami's going in as potentially the third-place team in the ACC. So yeah, I, and, and, I and they're going to bar everything you're saying. I think they're going to keep – if SMU loses, the committee has made it clear that they're not going to dock you for losing your conference they title. Should. They're lying. They should, they're lying. But they will do it for the lying. Big 12. They're going to take They're going to take SMU out and heavily consider putting Clemson in over SMU, who's lost to – that's that's one of the reasons the BYU is being kept so low. How much more can we make optically SMU not look as good? It is less so to me a, a conference conversation as much as it is a brand conversation. That logo, Indiana. Is, is an example to me. If they lost the Big Ten championship game, there would be moves made to try to keep them out of that 12-team playoff because that's the nature of the committee. They want Ohio State. They want Oregon. They want Michigan, Alabama. And for the Big 12, you have to create that. That's the one area where I'm like, you know what? Shoot. Maybe they're right. We don't have an Alabama. And, and so this is where I always go with this. Oh, baby. Come on. This is where I always go with this. Clemson. It's up. It's fellas, up. 15 years ago, Clemson. <laughs> made less in revenue for football than Bowling Green. They sucked. Nobody played for Clemson that was good. They couldn't win a football game. They were terrible. 15 years later, a committee will bend over backwards to put them in. What differentiated Texas Tech from Clemson 15 years ago? Nothing. Oklahoma State? Nothing. Colorado? Nothing. So we we build then a Clemson. One team that has national success, and that's all it takes. I volunteer. Well, Borba, I, I know volunteer. we both have lots. To I was going to say, say he's got you. Don't worry. Yeah, I think honestly, there's just a lot of things wrong with the playoff committee, the playoff format. Like, we could dive into you, so many. You want BCS? I, I I just think the computer is a more a less objective way. We know what the data points are. We know what it values, and we could still keep the same energy of like we're valuing conference champions, right? It could still be the five top conference champions. It's just all these schools in between where it's like this school beat this many teams when they were ranked, but this school has a somehow a stronger strength of record or whatever. Like there's just so much going on. And I think it's just too inconsistent. Like I think every week, what's what's his name? Ward manual. When he goes on there, Reese Davis is literally like cooking him with questions. And it looks like he's like, "Uh, I don't know. Well, we kind of just did this this week. Yes. I don't get, how is Mac Rhodes in this room? How is the Baylor athletic director in this room? How are there former Arizona state players in this room? And they're not just well, usually they're asked to leave the room when their team is discussed and brought up. I can say that with what my t- t- conferences in general, right? Say I'm saying like conference, not even teams like Baylor's not under consideration, but yeah. how does, how does a Mac Rhodes not stand up and go, Hey, what's happening right now is for the benefit of money being in the pockets of a major school. <laughs> like the Michigan athletic director makes even more money. The more big 10 teams are put into the college football playoff. Yes, that's, but that's re- actually how it goes. No, you guys are right. So, but this is what I'll say. I want to compare it to the men's basketball committee because that's what my dad is a member of. So I have experience with this. So for example, Bubba Cunningham is going to be the head of that this year. That's the athletic director of North Carolina. When North Carolina is brought up, he's forced to leave the room. So I do think that's what's important to keep in mind here too, is they're keeping what track. About if, what about if Clemson is brought up in the basketball conversation? Does Bubba Cunningham stay in the room? I will du- I will double check on that and get back to see. Like, I get what you're saying in terms yeah, of the conference yeah. bias like well, that, but I just do know for a fact that there are other members to keep these things in mind and in track too as they try to account for those biases and things of that nature. And I'm sure the football one works in a similar manner. So to Borba's uh, point about the computers, I think one of my biggest frustrations is you see like, oh, this team is X against the top 25 when it's like, well, why does win against number 24 matter that much more against than team who was number 26, who was the first team out. And so you have like Missouri, for instance, who's just there for fodder of Alabama to have another ranked win. Whereas Mm -hmm. some of these other ones like Syracuse isn't ranked. So it looks worse for a Miami. And so I think that's the biggest thing that I would, I would look to the computer, what Borba was saying, because that would value those sort of things a little bit better in an equal sense. And in 2005, I think Miami is squarely because it matters where your brand is at the time of the ranking. In 2005, Miami's number nine in the country right now. They're in a spot like a, like an Alabama is because their brand was so powerful. They lost that. And I think it can be gained or lost in Sweden in, in college. We've talked so much college football today. I have chills coming up. Let's wrap up the college football playoff conversation. Parker Ainsworth joins the show, sadly. This is the Locked On Big 12 squad. All right, with the college football playoff talk, as heated as it can be, computer, no computer, I think we can all agree that 
anything would be better than this. All right, I'll admit it. I had to bring another food take to the table. Park Rangers host a locked on Cougs, and I'm bringing this each and every week when I can't be there in person. But I want to ask, because I'm interested in a handful of y'all's responses, how long do you keep the leftovers in the fridge for after Thanksgiving? And how long is too long? Now, this is going live about a week after Thanksgiving. Things are getting a little ripe. Things might be kind of done. But also there's the freezer. Tell me what you think. How long do things stay in your fridge after Thanksgiving? It's fair Where's the stay in the fan shout out? Uh, yeah, doing a little teaching and coaching, well, too. The, we have completely yeah, wrecked. Five hours? Yeah. Eddie's holding the five hours. <laughs> Former sponsor of Locked On, <laughs> but he's just holding on to that one. Uh, I want to know what is at the. All the right, I'll admit I had to bring in that butterfly thing. What is that? It's the the Twitter the replacement for Twitter, if I'm not mistaken. What really? He's got some butterfly logo on there, right? The BS. All right, I'll admit it. I had to bring I, another. What blue is that? To the table. Painsworth five twelve. Sky dot Oh, that's, that's, that's that blue thingy that people blue sky, got, right? Blue sky. Yeah, that's oh. that thing. Twitter's replacement. Yeah. Isn't that what Mike Excellent. Gundy wore the shirt for? People got. Isn't that wasn't that blue sky? It was like O A N or something. Or o something. Then uh, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna put my threads hey, handle in mine moving I, forward. I know not what you guys speak <laughs> of, but I, I will. I will circle back around the the, the playoff conversation. Um. I think one of the things Good. that Cody me, keep us on track, my man. Yes, Continue. look at me go, Chris Level. You should be proud, <laughs> um, guys. My, my biggest fear behind all of this is it adds more validity to us potentially, possibly getting to the super conference type of thing where you're not talking about the the Big Twelve or the ACC, right? There's been several people mention theoretically getting to like a top 40 top 50 teams in the country being in a super league and then everybody else kind of does their own thing i think more of these conversations about who should be 12 and 14 and 15 and 16 i think it's almost designed to have that excuse built in when the season's over or next year to be like guys see even the 12 team or 16 team's not going to work we're just going to have to do this branch off and accept it and if that's the case Teams like Oklahoma State currently cannot rest on 20 years of history. If you have back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back three and nine seasons, you might not make that top 40 cut line, which is why making moves is the most critical thing in the world right now. Yes, that's my frustrated voice coming out. I love you too, Chris. Carry how, on, fellas. Carry how on. How does Friends University do it, Cody? How's their playoff system? You know what? I did, don't don't dag nab it. So they lost, but that's because they went conserva Gundy mode and they decided to try to sit on a 17 7 lead instead of just run but their offense. No, how does the bracket? No, work? Drake, Drake, let me tell you. I okay, so oh. I do some broadcasting for Baker University, and, and this was this Let's was a go. mess. It's not Let's much go. better. Can Baker you guys the, kiss already? Like, no, what no, is listen. Going on here? <laughs> no, what? think about wow. this if this happened in the Big 12. So Baker ended up getting the 13 seed, the top. 20 make the playoffs. There's a bunch of auto bids, yada, yada. Top 12 get a buy. 13 plays 20, so forth. You work down to 16 and then on. The 12 seed was a team that Baker beat a week and a half before the regular season ended. On the road, they had the same record in the same conference. They got the 12 seed in the buy. Baker got the 13. Their quarterback rolled the ankle in the uh, season finale. He would have been back for the following week. Unfortunately, they get upset and lose. So I, I don't think it matters. No matter what, it's all corrupt. It's all messed up. Nothing yeah. works. Oh, I just, it, the question for me would be, if we went to a 24, which I know is crazy, why would we start adding more teams if this system doesn't work at, at 12? But yeah. at 24, we're talking about, okay, Colorado, Iowa State, we're going to get BYU, and we're going to get Arizona State in. And at that point, now we know, hey, no matter what, even if, because in the Big 12, what if Colorado would have won the Big 12 championship? Very good chance that Saturday comes around and they would have beaten any of those other three teams. It's at least a possibility, right? We won't know now. In a 24-team playoff, they've at least got a shot to prove, hey, we could have been the, be the best team in the Big 12. We just we, – we, we don't have a chance anymore. Like, it's over. We had, but also lost games. Like, had a chance yeah. to prove and still lost yeah. games. We talked about that with Arizona State, right? Like, But so did Alabama, you know? Like, that's why I want – the best sub-500 team I've ever seen. After those losses. And three, I just, rank, three ranked wins in a row. A lot of resumes that has to count for something. I respect um, that. I respect how Cody – Cody gave his college football playoff opinion, but it circled back to like being frustrated at Mike Gundy for not firing anybody. <laughs> That's what I respect. Oh, I love it. Um, before we get out of here, this. All right. Planting a flag in the middle of the playing surface 
feels like the best way to get yourself in the news, according to college sports last weekend. When the Big 12 Conference fancies itself as a basketball conference, Brett Yormark has said as much as well. And so I was thinking, what are things that you, you could do that are similar to planting a flag in the middle of the field in a basketball game? Like, can you plant? What's his thought process? Lies well, whoever bar. loses tip-off gets socked in the mouth. How about that? <laughs> Big 12 WWE, baby. Jump on hey, the scoreless table. Light right? the court on fire. Start ripping the court up. Tell him Bell. On the logo. Just go down every time. Stop Tell Brett's, Bell. Brett's yep. already got Neo coming to the halftime of the Big 12 championship. He's like, come on, guys. What more can I do? I, had, uh, I worked for an ESPN radio station a year ago, and we had this uh, this this guy who's older. He uh, he talked to me, uh, ESPN radio. And when they announced Neo, he gave it a, who's this uh, Neo guy? They got on the uh, Big 12 thing. It's like, ah. You're talking, you're talking about Matt Mosley. <laughs> Absolutely, it's Mosley. It's yes. 100% Mosley. Because it was, it was Nelly last year. He was like, this shot. Guys, Nelly, N- huh? Nelly was absolutely <laughs> terrible. I was really I did, excited. Yes. I was so excited, right? I was going to video it for my kids and stuff back home. And it was extremely disappointing. Well, he, he's like 10 years past. 15 years passes. And he didn't, and he didn't, he didn't hit a note. in a he better didn't, spot. He didn't try to hit a note. Year, the people behind him didn't try to hit notes. Next year it's going like, to be T-Pain. It'll be Akon the following year. It was, a, it was be, a talk-a-thon with fireworks. Genuine, the rule. Like, what? Genuine? <laughs> big Boy? They can bring Big Boy out there. They're playing in Atlanta just for Big Boy to come and do the halftime show. Andre 3. We haven't seen him in a while. We can keep naming rappers, but before we get out of here, out of here. He sent three videos. Hypothetical wins. Big 12 squad is parked. Is he holding an expo marker? What's he doing? Hypothetical wins. Big 12 squad is Parker Ainsworth host a lockdown Cougs. I think we're missing the boat here. We should make up our own hypothetical wins, and then we'll have a better shot at the college football playoff just like the SEC does. I've got my top three hypothetical wins for Houston, and I want to hear yours. My first one, Houston beats Oklahoma if Zion Chris plays. Zion Chris got banned. All right, that's enough of that. But still, I like, I, guys, he wants to flash that stand the fans so bad. I like he does. that so bad. The he loves that, it. The Add Ole Miss. Football are, kill, are killing this right now. Like the amount of times where it's like Alabama would beat this team. Like we don't know that. We did not. Uh, I, that's next week, the best point. I'm gonna bring a bottle of Hems and a Built Bar to the show. <laughs> I'm gonna do two times. Hold I'll bring the Z biotic for me and Nick. We're gonna need it. <laughs> Somebody hey, really quick, the-, the fact that we did this whole show and no one roasted me for my voice, I thought there was no way I was getting through that without that uh, happening. You've been roasting enough this year. We're gonna get I, like so I was great. saving it personally for when we're not recording. So I was going to make a puberty joke, but then not I remembered same. I scream a lot too, so there's going to be a day that I sound like a dying fish, and I don't want to be made fun of. So. And any puberty joke you make about Wister, so he just takes his hat off and it goes right away. <laughs> he could not. Nobody. I, mean, <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't going to do that either. He needs our old friends from Nutribowl. Nutribowl is a crazy (laughs) one to drop. Oh, that's great. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time, as every Big 12 squad show is. Thanks for making our shows your first lesson every single day. From Oklahoma State to Texas Tech to Kansas to all of the guys who are here talking about sports today. I'm proud. Our producer is going to – Allie Bronze is going to watch this and be like, what the hell was that, guys? That sucked. You guys were way too journalistic. Yeah, we didn't even talk about the Thanksgiving food. Why, we completely we glossed even, over we that. We went right past Hammer leftovers. turkey. Chris Level is a uh, hey, ham, no he, doubt. It's got to be They're both ham. trash. And hey, at least we didn't miss the opportunity to trash. remind everybody that Mike Gundy is sponsored by hers. And everybody <laughs> on Gundy's staff is still there. Brought to you by Game Time, locked on Dusty Grande Squad.